welcome to Yafcast, the podcast where we pick a terrible sounding film and watch it so you don't have to. I'm John Bullock, and joining me in the war against drug peddling priests and murderous bikers is... Yaf. And Andy. Smooth, real smooth. <laughs> um, just, uh, just so you know what tripe we've been watching on your behalf, here's the trailer. Freak Show Entertainment is proud to present the most unholy film you'll see this year. Forgive me, Lord, for I'm about to sin. I'm not the Lord. He only works through me. What is said here is between us and God. I'm not here to confess any sins. I'm here to commit them. In a church on the outskirts of hell. An innocent nun was drugged, beaten, and left for dead. She lost everything except her faith. I was dead and God came to me. He told me to kill. Kill who? All who sin against his name. If you're gonna be doing the Lord's work, you need the Lord's tools. Now she's going to show them that hell had no fury like a new nun with a big gun. We have a vigilante in the calles going around and killing all the bad guys. We are the bad guys. New nuns with big guns. You know, you're not exactly the forgiving type. This sister is one bad mother. Brought to you by Freak Show Entertainment. The guys who brought you Run Bitch Run. Which pretty much says it all. <laughs> What's Run Bitch Run? <laughs> <laughs> this film is... Tarantino could have made this film today if Tarantino were 14 year old boy who'd been to a Catholic school and had serious issues. <laughs> That's an interesting concept. It's just, it's, it's a lot of, like, it's like, it's literally like a 14 year old boy sat down and thought, right, if I could make a film, what would I put in that film? Well, I'd have tits, I'd have uh, naked women everywhere, I would have guns and lots of sex. Yeah, that's pretty much sums up this movie, really. It was more rape than sex, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a good point. There was a lot of nun rape. <laughs> all right, let's let's try let's try and work from start to finish because otherwise this, we're going to get messed up with all the frigging crap that's in this film. It's, by the way, a good tagline for the podcast: watching crap so you don't have to. <laughs> Definitely, it. really good. So, like the first thing that struck me was the music. It's <laughs> it seemed the first like ten minutes of this film. It seemed like they weren't sure what music direction they were going to take. It started off with like potentially the most horrible rock music I've ever heard, like half heavy metal, half somebody beating a guitar with their own forehead, and then it sort of switched to like seventies porn music, you know, like bomb chicka wow wow sort of music, and then eventually it went into pan pipes. Yeah, and the weird thing was it didn't really go with the setting, which is a bit wild west sort of. I just found the whole yeah. thing really confusing. I found the way that some scenes just went into black and white, you know, almost randomly. And then just out again. It was just playing around with things. Well, that's a lot of the style that that like the directing style sort of looked like Tarantino. If Tarantino had had a lobotomy. Yeah, it sort of that sort of style reminded me of Pulp Fiction a little bit. Yeah. Which I must say is a lot better film than this. But I also, haven't um, seen yet. <laughs> Titty Flicker, bad name even for a strip club. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Still one of the better bits in the movie. But um, <laughs> did anybody else notice uh, after the after the first bit with the nun uh, when the old dude's got her in um, in the bedroom and he's like giving her drugs or whatever he's doing to make her all better and everything? Did you see the size of his man boobs? They were bigger than some of the strippers. I didn't notice that to be honest. Oh, he's prancing around that cabin with his like open shirt with nothing on underneath it and sits down and he's just like you know like semi-pregnant belly pair of man boobs. <laughs> <laughs> Fair, most of the boobs on offer weren't exactly the, the largest around. Or the realist. No, I noticed that. You know, I can't believe this film was made in 2010. It's something about it and the, the music quality. Everything, well, everything about it didn't make me think it was from 2010. Did anyone check the budget? Yes, I've got that for the trivia section. Ooh, okay, I'll wait for that. It, uh, it explains <laughs> a lot. 
So yeah, uh, I, one one thought I had about this was that a uh, girl who's been in a drug induced coma after being having the shit beaten out of her by some random priesty father person wakes up from his from a drug induced coma telling somebody that God has told her to kill people. So what do you do? Give her some guns. Yeah, I thought that was yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. Right after he says, you and know, then... God didn't talk to you, you know, it's just a re bad reaction from all the shit that's in your body. And then yeah. he gives her the guns. It's just like total 180. He turns then around and starts do? cooking. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to turn Mom away from you now and give him you guns. was determined to get himself killed. He deserved to be shot. But he was, he could have been one of the more interesting characters. He looked awesome. And he was called a witch doctor, <laughs> so, you know, that's kind With of... his boobs. Well, he had a nice beard. But at least he tried to help her. Not like all the others. I think he was more forced into help while he was carrying on the floorways on some of the other scenes, I think. By the way, in these notes, I've got, I couldn't remember her name, the main character's name, so I just wrote down Sister Weird Face. <laughs> Damn, I keep... Did everybody else noted she had a really weird face? Was no. she Angela? One of them was Angelina, wasn't it, or something? I can't... The only name I remember is Chavo. Because <laughs> I associate with, associated that with Chavs, obviously. Let me pronounce it a little differently. <laughs> no, well, just just remember. Do not steal from Chavo. <laughs> if you can take one thing away from this film. Poor Chavo. So, what did you think of the gunfights? I'd because... say, considering she's not had any practice, she was a good aim. She had a year. She, yeah, she, she may have been a good training. aim. But did you notice that in she must have been shot at, like, a hundred times, and she only got hit once through the entire film. She's a woman. By a guy in a wheelchair. <laughs> was he in a wheelchair? No, he sat down, but I didn't know he was in a wheelchair. Yeah, it was this a guy like, in a wheelchair. In that first scene, in that first scene where she bursts in with the, uh, into the, <laughs> we've got to talk about that, the uh, nuns all naked in, you know, wearing nothing except for the headdress part, all making cocaine or whatever the hell it was, when she... <laughs> What? When she bursts into that bit and starts shooting people, did you notice that none of the thugs in there never shot at her? They shot like other nuns, and then yeah. when when they shot a nun, then she shot them. <laughs> so it's like <laughs> attracting her attention, sort of thing. Why didn't one of them shoot at her? I don't know. I've seen all the brightest buttons in there. <laughs> this is brilliant. Yeah, but so <clears throat> whereabouts? Was did we anybody catch the look? Is this meant to have been in Mexico? Because it was very like. Mexican -y, the whole feel of the film. Yeah, it was very. Um, I think it was. Because I'm just um, wondering where he got the idea for a, a church that basically forces its nuns to work wearing nothing but the headdress. All attractive nuns, you'll notice. Like, <laughs> I wonder how many nuns look like they've had, like, uh, boob well, the implants. You know where the like, unattractive ones go? They, they become mothers. Getting raped by a black man. <laughs> That's another <laughs> thing we can bring out. It's just, what was he in there for? Just to do the raping? Yeah, yeah, that, that, that he was there to it. rape. Yeah, that's... When he wasn't raping someone, he was threatening to rape someone. <laughs> that was just bizarre. Yeah. <laughs> I don't so, know how his acting career is going to get any better now that that's on his um, portfolio. Great rapist. He need somebody to rape. <laughs> <laughs> Play a very convincing rapist. <laughs> you said, I don't think most of the people in the film are very good at acting. What was his name as well? He had a really strange name, which I couldn't Kickstand. understand. Kickstand. That. Kickstand. <laughs> and the the main lady was called Sister Sarah. Just so you know. Who was so oh, was Angelina the other first. one? The friend thing. Uh, yes, her Special friend. friend. More organised person might have had IMDb up, but I forgot. That's fine. I've got it up. Way so. for Yama. <laughs> Wow, it actually got a better rating on IMDb than it did on Netflix, which is interesting. Got a 3.9 on IMDb and a 3.5 on Netflix. Ah, but <laughs> I've just noticed something. Netflix is out of 5, IMDb's out of 10. Uh, yeah, that's kind of in between <laughs> votes as well. So, yeah, that 3.5 on, what did they get on Netflix? Oh, uh, okay, it got 2.4. On Netflix, doesn't it Netflix gives you what it thinks you you would like it? I think it. So you can rate it. It gives you a suggested rate, like a yeah, suggested rating, rating. But you can rate it. Yeah. Well, either side would rate it a one. That's so clear. I was actually going through the film, kind of struggling to not just look at the wall and look at all the pretty patterns in the uh, plain well, yellow wall. <laughs> one means hated it. Two means didn't like it. Three is liked it. Now that's way too really high. Really liked it. 
and five is loved it. And there's a not interested button underneath, which I think is the one you should press. I'll go for that one then. Is, is there an I want my money back button? I want my time back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Who suggested this pile of rubbish? I don't know. That would be as. <laughs> well, I didn't read so, anything about it. I just saw the saw the name of it and thought ne- none of us would have watched that. The and title was why. very accurate, and, I have to say. And now that we've... Well, actually, I don't know how accurate it was because... She was never up. actually. She was never actually nude with guns. She was nude at t- times, but I don't she think was? you ever actually saw. On the bed when... with that woman. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, but she was like cleaning the gun, though. She never actually used a gun with <laughs> no <the> clothes woman. <laughs> on. That's another thing. There was a lot of in this. There's a lot of lesbianism. Yeah. Like the nuns and the motel girl and. Indeed. But anyway, we're, we're speaking of um, what we were speaking of earlier about the black guy raping. First scene, uh, first introduction to him when he put uh, the random family pull up at the garage that's owned by Chavos. Did you uh, notice that the guy who got out of the car is like the whitest man on the planet? <laughs> he's like short, slightly overweight, balding. He's wearing a Bermuda shirt and shorts yeah. with socks pulled up to his knees. Yeah, it's like in this film that's full of Mexican-looking types. You know, like with the well, they were Olive, traveling, Olive you know, skin. Was, and... She was the daughter was talking about friends to the and beach. Over it, and it stuff, was yeah. just. It was just making a statement. It's like, this guy is white. <laughs> I didn't get the point of that family, actually, because it didn't really serve anything. It was just like... All, of... all I can think is that they were there to um, Show illustrate the how bad. About, yeah. yeah. Because he never actually did anything to provoke them, and all he did when they came over was start crying. And then the daughter was... <laughs> yeah, you never saw anything about that. Thank God. Point. I wonder what happened to the daughter. Well, she was given to the... Like, I, mean, pres- I think it's pretty... Life. It's fairly easy to assume what happened immediately, but, I mean, presumably they haven't just locked (laughs) her in a cellar or something. Well, let's hope not. And one thing I wasn't sure about this, because I've I've wrote down here, black guy rapes woman to death, question mark, because at some point it cuts to a view of her and she looks, like, unconscious or something, but also her skin looks greyer. I don't know if it was just... (laughs) I don't know if it was just me not noticing, not looking right or something, but it really looked like it was raping a corpse. Yeah, I don't know totally how don't she would have died, though, because that wouldn't make you die, I don't think. It's because he's hung like a sperm whale. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I have no idea, it's just, it was a very random shot. <laughs> it was. Oh, I'm going to laugh all the way through this, I can't help it. It was just such a terrible film, and it, it felt actually quite embarrassing watching it. Oh, my well, God. Sorry. I almost thought it was one of those films that you watch really late at night when you're trying to get to sleep, and it's so terrible you can't stop watching it. I could have easily stopped watching it if I didn't have to watch oh, it. Oh yeah, I had to stop myself from stopping watching it. Yeah. <laughs> I took some breaks as well, just to kind of... Well, I must uh... admit, my partner did look at me rather strangely while I was watching it. It's not my normal choice I'm of film. surprised he's still your partner after you started watching that. <laughs> um, Father Kalito... Like the the guy who's I guess like one of the main drug runners in this church. I don't Evil know this priest. Is this film meant to be a statement? Like this guy making a statement about religion, like he thinks that all religions corrupt and abusive and all that. Is it because I, I couldn't shake the feeling that maybe he was trying to make a point, or he was trying to like sort of air his views. This is his artistic vision to like let the world know what the church is really like. I think the way it was made and how bad it was, I don't think he would have thought that deeply about this. No. <laughs> it definitely looks like a film that doesn't try not to take itself seriously, but doesn't do a very good job at it. But, uh, yeah, oh yeah, Father Kalito. In the confession booth, when Sister Weirdface comes for him, he shoots her, like, through the confession grating thing. He shoots three times with the gun pointed at her head. And it, like, and bounces it back or something. Is that what's supposed to have happened? I think that's, it's supposed that's to what happened. It would just bounce back and something, but her and, and then she just points her thing. yeah, and then she points her big gun at him and he's dead. Yeah, because he had like fifty thousand bullet holes and one well, not one hit her. Well, it, it would have been a sawn off shotgun, won't it? That would have spread the, uh, the ammo. And he was on the body as well. But you would have thought, well, not you going would have into physics, with this film. <laughs> but um, you would have thought like some of the spray would have come back at her, or his bullets would have gone back at him. I would have thought that his three shots aimed directly at her head would have found the way through that epoxy little metal grating. Ah, uh, but maybe she's protected by God. 
Well, God did tell her to kill. Yeah. <laughs> uh, motel lady, I've wrote this down here because she's the only person in this film that I recognised from outside of this film. It was played by Sarah Emmons. <laughs> and then I looked her up on IMDb. Turns out she's been in four films. I'm guessing her, her profile's not fully up to date, but she's been in like four films, uh, and I don't know any of them. Oh, but so, she, yeah, she did look familiar. So maybe where the hell just, I recognise her from, I don't know. Yeah, maybe she just looks like someone else that's famous. Well, the only reason I'm fairly sure that it's her and not someone else is because she looks a little bit like Winona Ryder, and I remember thinking that in whatever I saw her in before. Ah, uh, what other films but was yeah, she in? I can't remember. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> I mean, you don't expect me to be organised, do you? She was in this. She was in a TV series called Secret Girlfriend. She was in Passenger Side and Technical Splendor. I've never heard of any of them. And no, te me Technical the Splendor was a short, not a proper film. Oh, right, okay. Yep, she never heard of them. only in one episode of Secret Girlfriend. <laughs> oh, the, um, the, main, um, the main nun lady, what was her name? Mother Magda. Oh, she really grated on me all the time she did. I don't know what it was about her I the whole way through. That was very clever casting because that was what she was there for. She was meant to grate on you, and that was well casted. I think she was good at her role. Yeah, that's. Uh, I mean, I can't imagine she's got the range to play anything else, but it was good casting <laughs> for that role. She's oh, been I'm in quite a few. During, um, oh, sorry, go on. She's been in quite a few other films, none of which I've heard of. But she's only just mm. got famous recently. By looks well, like. the, I had a quick look at the IMD page for the guy who plays Chavos. He's got like a twelve pages worth of credits. Wow, it's pretty good. To, I noticed this just after that. <laughs> no. <laughs> I think a lot of it's like one episode of a TV series sort of thing. And he's got us. I remember seeing at least one that was like um, sort of bearded guy number one sort of thing. But uh, I noticed this. Uh, Mexico in our, has to. Yeah. <laughs> I noticed this with our, a black guy's second rape victim, the old lady, the old nun, which. Oh, like, that, was, like, that was horrific. <laughs> yes. I mean. <laughs> This is like in you know in films people want to push boundaries and they want to sort of like that was know, a bit push too push, far. push the envelope stuff. There's some envelopes that just don't need pushing. Yeah. It's like it's like I, you just like what's it? I I you you don't think I put a, a, an old nun getting raped here? It's just like no no it's fine. I, I'll take your word for it. I don't need to see it. <laughs> I, I believe that you would do it, but don't. Good on her for playing but, the part though, because I wouldn't have done that. <laughs> you, you know God. she didn't. You know she didn't really. There were no, only I acting, know, but. Right? It's just weird. Why would you? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. So one thing I noticed there, and then I remember that about the first. It was kind of similar with the first rape scene. It takes him a surprisingly short amount of time to get into position, considering his clothes and stuff in the way. Like all he seems to do is unzip his pants and then dive in. Like, have you seen the number of films Kickstand's got though? He's got quite no, a lot as well. No, he's, he's got always quite played a rapist. Is like is credit list like rapist number one. <laughs> Bodyguard, Enforcer, Double D, Jailhouse, Thor, Double D, Coach. This is the parts guard, so he's got a few guards and that sort of thing. No surprise there. Double D. And also, also <laughs> lending a bit of uh, strength to my theory that this would actually have been made by a fourteen-year-old, one that's just on the sort of tail side of puberty. Uh, is the scene with the pool? The two ladies playing pool. One of them just happens to be playing pool with no top on. <laughs> and then they happen to go, nice rack. Yeah. 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 Sorry, that just made me like. Urgh. Yeah. You have really clips for that. Like... Why do you have to do it in your head? I don't know. You were saying? It's, it's just. <laughs> why Why is the extremely attractive woman playing pool with no clothes on? <laughs> with incredibly <laughs> fake boots. It's not, it's not even subtle. So anyway, we're going back to uh, Sarah Emmons or whatever in it. I forgot. Yeah, Sarah Emmons, the the only girl that I recognise out of this film. Easiest lay ever. Like, she's meant to be watching the nun. Like, she's got a gun pointed at her, and all the nun does is start kissing a knee, and that's it. She's she's gone. Yeah. I swear I've seen her before. <laughs> Was she in? We just said that. that we, we just um, had this conversation. We you don't pay attention at all, do you? Wasn't I the, didn't I say be right back a few seconds ago? Did you? Oh, I didn't know. You know we're recording a podcast, right? Yeah, I know. The door. <laughs> Sorry, <right. laughs> I did it in chat discreetly, but now it's up against the world. So, um, speaking of stupid things, <clears throat> um, <laughs> fat guy in the strip club, like you know, one of Chavos's like right hand men, 
I like the fat guy with the ponytail and the moustache. When he's in the strip club and they're waiting for everyone to turn up, did you notice that he was spending time with that stripper who was behind the glass and he was like touching the glass and licking the glass where the boobs were pressed up against it? Does any, would anybody ever really do that? Well, I just think how many other people have done that to that bit of glass. I mean, outside of prison, it happens in prisons, doesn't it, in movies, where, like, they put the breasts up against the window and, and, and all that sort of thing, in, I assume, in movies. Oh. But does that really happen in strip clubs? Do people start licking the glass where there's a boob on the other side? Chances what does that accomplish? Are, if someone's thought about it, someone's done it. Yeah, I yeah, imagine I've... the guy who wrote this probably done everything in the film. Mm. He well, looks quite young. Known, played pool with no top on, being raped by a black guy. <laughs> <laughs> and in the strip club the friggin when the nun gets there and she starts bursting into every room and shooting everyone like the the prostitutes the thugs random people who've not like because up until that point it seems like the only people in the world are either nuns or like religious people or biker gangs and that super white family <laughs> and then, other than other than that, nobody else exists. And for the first time, you see people who aren't either nuns or like biker gang, and then she shoots them. But everybody, every Tell room she bursts in. Sorry, go on. Sorry, go on. I well, was just gonna say, every room she burst into, the person turns around and goes, "Who the fuck are you?" She's pointing yeah, a massive same. gun at you. It's like every single one is like, "Who the fuck are you? Who the shit are you?" And every single one of them gets aggressive. She bursts into a room pointing a gun at you. You'd be like, hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Plus, <laughs> would no one else hear the machine gun and think, what the hell? You wouldn't just carry on, would you? Well, that it's one like the next room. You're not going to hear it at all. No, obviously not. It just felt a bit Max Payne-y, that whole sequence, like kind of slowly going in and they're kind of pointing a gun. They say the guy at the top of the stairs coming out. You should have easily yeah. shot her. So there yeah, must have been some kind of... Well, time, yeah, but I've already pointed on. that bit out, though. Uh, yeah. How many people should have easily shot her? <laughs> and why on like, earth was she wearing white? That's what I didn't understand for that bit. What was the resemblance of the whiteness? Being an know, angel? Maybe, maybe that's like a head nun or Purity, something. Purity, I know. But, uh, yeah, uh, maybe the guy would claim that the reason nobody could shoot her is because she was protected by God, but I genuinely don't think he put much... I, th I think he was just crap filming. <laughs> he didn't know what he was doing. You didn't think it'd look bad on film, maybe? Yeah, maybe. I'm still horrified at the last scene. Yeah, so that's what I've got next was... on my little list. Well, <laughs> it's, uh, well it's, it's just... It's a very... from like Okay, I know this is getting a bit sort of technical for this film, but the angle that she was shooting him from, there is no way she could have blown it off. <laughs> And not just that, but they spent far too much time on that scene, I think. Looking at it on the floor. And... <laughs> yeah, and, and then, then him holding it. Up, and then face. why, yeah, why, why, do why does he want to hold it up and scream, holding his own penis that she shot off <laughs> with, like, surgical precision? That didn't look like it had been blown off by a bullet. It looked like it had been chopped off with a scalpel. Yeah. <laughs> the whole thing where oh. he's, After, he's worried it's and, all about being had a gun to his head, and then he's like, ah... When he's yeah, oh yeah, yeah. You can kill me, but don't shoot my penis off with that surgical gun that you've got there. <laughs> but, and and this happened, by the way, after yet another rape scene <laughs> with at this time of a lesbian nun. Is your sound cut out? No, nope, sorry. Well, I mean, it had, but not by accident. I'm not the I'm not the dial. Um, ah. Yeah. So, so we have yet another rape scene. Then he gets his his uh, penis lopped off by like a what I can only imagine is a super thin razor sharp. Could be a laser bullet. gun, hasn't it? Honestly, yeah. that just makes that goes around corners. Gun sound effect just for you know. <laughs> yeah. Retro. Did you notice that the very end? And I hope to God this doesn't happen. But at the very end, it kind of sets it up for a sequel. Oh yeah, I noticed that. I what happened at the end again? I remember no. something setting up, but I can't. The uh, oh, the old like, guy no, 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 barely speaks speak English. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. With all the scars on his face. That's, wasn't that the guy driving the bus at the very beginning? Yeah, but I thought that was um, the same guy that got bashed his that got his head bashed in. So I got a bit I confused. Thought, by it looked that. a bit similar. That. There was quite a few people with loads of scars and like face kind of all dodgy. Maybe it was the same actor, and he was hoping that we wouldn't notice. Maybe, maybe they ran because out. Because the assumed the level of intelligence for this film isn't that high, obviously. No. Yeah, because I swear they did look the same. I thought they were the same person. And I thought, I wonder how, because he 
died. So, yeah, definitely. So, so look forward to a clips. sequel. Let's go to uh, yeah. I'm not watching a sequel, by the way. We've we already, we already had... Uh, steal from Chavo. Which, obviously, we all know. Some nutjob is running around whacking priests left and right. <laughs> Make that in this film that could be taken either way. Yeah. <laughs> so our first introduction to the whitest family in Mexico. What a shithole. Penny, put your mouth. Well it is. Come here. What? <gasps> That's for the attitude, little missy. And then she gets right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, big black man gonna come in and teach you about your attitude, bitch. <laughs> That's my black voice. That's a very good black voice, actually. Well done. Have you, have you heard a black man talk before? <laughs> yeah, we don't get that in this country. No, 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 no. Oh, shit. Oh. Was that the guy waking up in the bar, wasn't it? <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's the best drunk talk ever. No, 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 no. Oh, shit. Oh. <laughs> that was probably the best bit of acting in the film. Mm. Uh, this next clip, I've clipped more for the laugh at the end than the actual what they're talking about. But just it's, I've just written down dopey laugh. We have a vigilante in the calles, going around and killing all the bad guys. In case you guys forgot, we are the bad guys, huh? <laughs> <laughs> that was terrible. <laughs> the most fake Dude. laugh ever. Yeah. I guess I they didn't take any second takes for this one. Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Go on. What were you no, I was just saying, I guess they didn't take any second takes. Or... You know this guy who plays Father Kalito, he's, he's professional in all three films that he's been in. He's probably, um, probably did this in take one. I'm in the mood for a good jerk-off story. Uh -oh. I'm in the mood for a good jerk-off story. And the whole film's got them. <laughs> yeah, this whole <laughs> film is a jerk-off story. There's no scene hey, uh, that isn't. I clipped this bit as one of the few bits that I thought, actually, that's quite funny. Well, I say one of the few bits. This is the only bit. That self kill him in his own church. <sighs> he should have prayed harder. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Terrible. Wait. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, movie title reference? We're looking for a nun. Eh? A nun with big guns. You mean big guns like in big tits? <laughs> The jokes in this film are just the, that, the rack thing, the prayed harder, and that yeah. one were just terrible. Just, well, that, that one clip pretty much sums up this film. But uh, this next clip, actually, I thought uh, Yama might like, because I know she struggles with this noise. It was like I remember. <laughs> that was a person! <laughs> it sounds like a cat! It was like I remember. <laughs> <laughs> She's got tribbles. <laughs> I can't do that. Definitely not. Good Give acting. Give it a go. Sorry, sorry, one more time. Like I remember. <laughs> <laughs> it, just sounds, it sounds like like an animal of some sort. Maybe not a cat, but like a tribble from Star Trek or something. So, all right, I've got one more one more clip. This is like near the end of the film. Um, this guy's voice, it, I couldn't, it sounds like somewhat from a 1920 or 1940s, like, American Western sort of thing. Makes your dick just pop out of your pants. But the guy who's, talk who's talking is like eight foot tall and built like a brick shit house. Yeah, he did have a really funny voice, didn't he? I sounded like a 14 year old listening back. Makes your dick just pop out of your pants. Which crime was that again? Uh, to, I didn't recognize him up until at that point. When I saw him come on screen, I didn't think, oh, that's that guy or that guy or whatever. So I'm not sure if that's the first time he's in the film. I'm just trying to wonder, what, what things have ever made your dick pop out of your pants? Yes. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> it's just a rent, I don't, half the dialogue in this film feels like it was written by a 14 year old. And the other half maybe had a credit to a 16 year old. But um, I've just done some looking up on the um, director and he does look quite young, but um, there's no information on him. I can't find any information anywhere. Oof. Let's move on to some trivia. <laughs> <laughs> Blacklist point first. Now, like, yeah. Well, any 
any film that's made by Camelot Entertainment, Dark Knight Pictures, and Freak Show Entertainment. Yeah, that's what I was when it came up and it started with Freak Show Entertainment. I thought, nah, this isn't yeah. any good, is it? <laughs> Ignore well, the whole at least, title. At least they're honest. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> we should this, have followed the film, obvious hints. Speaking of Camelot, uh, this film was the subject. I don't know if I'm, it's unclear as to whether it still is, but it was the subject of one of the largest lawsuits in California. They're one of these companies that attempted to sue all the people that had pirated it. You know, in that sort of move where they'll send a letter really? out saying, "Yeah, so <laughs> they're one of them people that uh, tried to get away with sending letters out to people saying, we know you've been pirating this." Um, we're going to take you to court, or you can pay us two grand, and we'll drop this, and we'll leave you out of the lawsuit. Sort of thing. Probably so made more trying... money from doing that than the actually. So, well, that's, that's that's the thing. I'm not sure it actually worked because it sort of, it was a bit unclear in the in the Wikipedia page, <laughs> which could have been wrong anyway. Um, but it sounded like it might have been dropped. But what happened with this is they had a loan from another company. Uh, that company, or oh, they defaulted on that loan. So that company were claiming rights to the film because obviously they weren't paying, it was like equivalent of a mortgage sort of thing. You stop paying your mortgage and the mortgage company take your house. So they were treating it like that and then they filed an identical lawsuit on the same 5,865 people. But uh, um, it, like I said, it's unclear if that's still going on. But it did say that if they managed to get money from all those people, they would have got more money from suing people than the film actually made in the box office. <laughs> You see, I don't even remember it being in the box office. I never I imagine, until you mentioned it. So it probably... I imagine it never would have been over. I don't think we will have seen it in cinemas or anything. I think that would have just been an America thing, probably in four theatres across the country. Yeah, because that was only two years ago. That's quite crazy that that was only made two years ago. The title even has straight to DVD written all over it. <laughs> but, uh, they wouldn't have needed much to make up the uh, to make a, a profit because the budget was eighty five thousand dollars. Wow, that's yeah. not bad. <laughs> it shows. I think <laughs> for the money, yeah, still quite a lot of money, I reckon. For what? So happened. most of those oh, guys, yeah, it's, it it's have... like, I don't, If I could, do, if somebody said, "Would you like eighty five thousand dollars?" It's not like I go, "It's not even worth getting out of bed for." But like for a movie. Like how, like, how much did, like, Grand Theft Auto cost 300 million to make, and that's a video game. Oh, uh, okay. How much did Batman cost, do you think? Oh, I no dread to think. Uh, 500 uh, million? <laughs> right, well, you got then. And this cost, this didn't even cost 1 million. This didn't even cost a tenth of 1 million. What? Cheap. So the actors must have worked for pretty much nothing. Uh, there is one scene in this film where after Father Kalito has been shot, you know, after he failed to shoot her point blank range in the head, uh, when Chavo comes round to visit Yama's, Yaz's favourite character, Mother Magda, uh, <laughs> Father Kalito's dead body can be seen breathing. I swear that it blinked as well. I swear it did. When when the, <laughs> when the cloth that. came off, I swear its eye blinked. And Maybe. Mother Magda doesn't play a very good dead person either, because I swear her mouth kept moving while she was meant to be dead. <laughs> <laughs> Just the air moving around in the body, the gases. Fine. I must admit, though, one thing I didn't notice in this film that I notice in quite a lot is things didn't change from one scene to the other. So sometimes... I could have did it in one shoot. <laughs> yeah. But you know, like sometimes in a film, something can move from one counter to another or they'll They're have wearing a, different a scar hair on band or something. Face. Oh, you mean continuity yeah. problems? Yeah. I didn't have any continuity problems with this one. <laughs> Oh, no, there was one. Um, was there? Oh, there was at least one, sorry. Uh, what's his face? When she was shot uh, in the side, which also, by the way, oh, if you're going to ballistics, that shot was impossible. Ah. It disappeared at one point in the scene afterwards. Did it? Hmm. Yeah. I didn't notice And that. by the way, if somebody shoots you from straight on in front and gets like a sort of glancing blow on the side, the bullet would not still be in your body. Plus, I swear it was the side that she didn't. She wasn't looking at him from that side either. I, I, yeah, I think it changed, changed sides or something as well. I did notice in the scene after that it had disappeared, but... I can't believe we've managed to talk about this film for so long, to be honest. I can't believe we didn't find more wrong with it. <laughs> well, the whole thing was wrong with it. We're just touching much on the main it, so... wrong things. Right, I've got um, the goofs page on IMDb. So there's, it's got that thing about Father Kalito's dead body breathing. Shara, uh, Shara. 
Sister Weirdface is shot on the left hip during a gunfire fight between her and Father Kalito. The wound disappears in the next scene. And at 38 minutes and 19 seconds, Sister Weirdface drives with no key in the ignition and the position set to off. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't notice that. That's not Neither one of the things I. I'm going to notice. <laughs> no, I mean, like, unless it showed a close-up of the keyhole. Uh, one thing I've got written down here, it's not really trivia or anything, but if you squint your eyes kind of at the poster, it looks like the front box of an Assassin's Creed game. <laughs> ah, is that why we picked it? I see. Very possibly. <laughs> uh, that's all I've got. <laughs> Has anybody got any finishing thoughts before we move on to Tenuous Link and let everyone know what our next film's going to be? Um, yep, I won't be recommending this to anyone. <laughs> anyway, just don't watch no, it. No, maybe should have like, how would you recommend this if you had to? You're a 14 year old boy. Might be good then. Um, I don't know. There's no redeeming features of this, I don't think. Unless you like nuns being raped <laughs> and nude women in nun costumes, nun, nun hats. I just don't get over that. Why is, <laughs> I, I, I just I don't get why they're wearing headdresses. For some reason, that's the bit that stood out as the weirdest part of that scene. Because otherwise you wouldn't know they're nuns. And there yeah, was no, one really, telling... really old naked nun, which freaked me out ever so slightly. What, more than the really old nun getting raped by the big black man? Yeah, just something about a really, really old naked nun. It's just a bit wrong. That's actually the sequel. <laughs> really old naked nun. <laughs> With bigger guns. <laughs> <laughs> With droopy guns. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yeah, I, I, could I probably... can't say I'd be recommending this film to anyone either. So, what are we watching next? Yeah, Big What's it going right, to be? Okay, I'm going to try and get through. I'm not going to try and read this fast. So this is uh, this is the tenuous link where I'm going to try and link this film to the film that we're watching next week um, with the weakest possible links that you could imagine. Yeah, please no nude, nude nuns or big guns, please. <laughs> so... <clears throat> Nude Nuns with Big Guns is full of actors I'd never heard of before, and one of those actors is Perry DeMarco, who plays Father Kalitos. DeMarco also starred in an episode of Malcolm in the Middle, where he played a character simply known as Teacher. Teacher sounds like Creature, the muggle-hating house elf from the Harry Potter movies. The Harry Potter movies tell a tale of a bespectacled wizard, a young wizard who attends a wizarding school called Hogwarts. Most of the exterior shots of Hogwarts were filmed at using Anne's... Arnwick Castle in Northumberland. Arnwick Castle has also been used uh, in Blackadder and Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Robin Hood was played by Kevin Costner, but the role was originally offered to Carrie Ells, who turned it down. But ironically, he went on to play Robin Hood in the spoof movie Robin Hood Men in Tights, which was directed by Mel Brooks. Mel Brooks is responsible for a number of spoof movies over the years, but perhaps his most memorable one is Blazing Saddles, a spoof western about a black sheriff and his deputy, the Waco Kid, played by Gene Wilder. Gene Wilder played Willy Wonka in the original movie based on the Charlie Chocolate and Charlie... Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Another movie based on the same book was released in 2005, directed by Tim Burton. Tim Burton is involved with Helena Bonham Carter who starred alongside Edward Norton in the movie Fight Club. Fight Club also featured hard rock singer Meatloaf. Meatloaf was once supported on a UK tour by Norwegian singer-songwriter Marion Raven, whose native country is also the setting for next week's film, Troll Hunter. My head's going to explode. <laughs> At least it's better than the last <laughs> film. I hope. I'm actually so, yes. looking forward to Troll Hunter. Next week's sure film why. is the Norwegian-made Troll Hunter. It's so, got a uh, bit of a better oh. rating than this. Yeah, hopefully this... W- <laughs> I mean, I know the, the sort of thing is we're trying to go for less than great films because it's funnier, but <laughs> I'm going to be happy if we don't go this low again. Yeah. <laughs> We've gone as low I, as we're ever going to go. So. I must admit, I've um, just found a link on um, IMDb for the worst films ever, and there are some really strange sounding ones in here, including <laughs> Santa Claus Conquers the Martians, and um, there's Do- Dr. Alien, and uh, let's see what else. Transmorphers instead of Transformers. There's, um, Sounds bit... like <laughs> porno titles. <laughs> and I Mega just, Piranha. Are you on the bottom hundred? Uh, the worst films oh. of all time. All oh, right, they've got a like bottom hundred, and the bottom one is Fat Girls, spelled P H A T G R I G R G I R L Z. Excellent. <laughs> we should so watch that. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. And curious, though. So were most of the nuns in this film. 
Oh, there's a film on here called Retard Dead, and it's about zombies. <laughs> Z- zombie retards. Yeah, Retard Dead. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> well, that's uh, so. If you would like to watch Troll Hunter along with us, uh, I'll look out. Imagine anyone's going to listen to this first one, but uh, if you'd like to watch Troll Hunter and then listen before listening to the podcast, it's on Netflix. Um, hopefully, it's better than this one. If you didn't, <laughs> if you haven't already seen this one, I don't recommend you go watch it so that it makes more sense. Because yeah, ma, would you do that link? Be great. <laughs> what? <laughs> Have you checked it out? Ah. Yeah, okay, and then uh, I can tell you the film the week after Troll Hunter will be. No, I'm not joking. <laughs> <laughs> we are, I'm not watching a film called Monstered. Can I just say that actually got a better rating than Nuns with Big Guns? <laughs> oh, I love that the, the main character or the top character on the credited cast is Paul Wiener. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Right, let's end this. <laughs> so yeah, troll hunter next week. Uh, thank you for listening, and remember. You do not steal from travel.